So now we all know the life cycle of a data analytic project. We discussed in the roadmap. So what is the life cycle of a data analytics? So if I write it down, the very step, first step is problem statement. Based on the problem statement, second step is you try to collect the data. Based on the way you collected the data, the third step is data understanding. Now, in order to collect the data, you use sampling techniques. So based on the sampling, you try to uh, go with your sampling techniques, random sample or stratified or cluster or whatever it is, majority random sampling. And the next one is data understanding. So what is the purpose? Like once you collected the data, you need to understand the data. So in order to understand the data, we have this techniques. So we call this techniques, you can see the name exploratory data analysis or we call it as a shortcut name EDA. EDA stands for exploratory data analysis. So in the exploratory data analysis, you are able to perform all these techniques. What are all these techniques? So you are able to perform measures of central tendency. You are able to perform measures of dispersion. You are able to perform correlation coefficient, probability distribution, central limit theorem. You are able to perform graphical uh, representations like line plot, box plot, scatter plot, bar plot, histogram. You are able to perform confidence interval. And apart from that, you even got probability distributions, you got hypothesis testing and all that, z-scores, like in the hypothesis, you got a chi-square, ANOVA, all this kind of tests we have it. So whenever you are trying to perform your, uh, what is that, your data, the very first time you get a data, you try to start performing measures of central tendency. So within the measures of central tendency, you got again three divisions. The one is mean, and the second one is the median and the last one is the mode. So now what does this mean? What is this median and what is this mode? Let me just write it down in a very simple way. Now I collected a data. So the very moment I'm doing an analysis on the salary of a data scientist. So I got the data here. So I collected data points. I collected overall five people. One, two, three, four, five. So when I inquired with the first person, he said the salary is around 6.7 lakh. Again, the second person, uh, he said like uh, 7.8 lakh. Again, another person, he said I got he got a salary around 5.5 lakh. Another person, 8.2 lakh. Another person, 7.1 lakh. So these are the overall salaries of a data scientist. Now, for example, there is only five records. It is easy for me to analyze it. In case. If there are 100 records, it is difficult for me to analyze. Why? I can't see every record and I can do that. So there, I can use a concept called as measures of central tendency. What is the purpose of measures of central tendency? It going to give us a quick idea about the data we have it. For example, now we all buy a bike. So now we are pumping lot of liters of, liters of petrol in our bike. Now, in order to say what is your mileage, you can't see for every liter, you don't measure it. You simply see the average mileage. So if someone salary, you don't see every salary point, you just calculate average salary. So if it, it, if it is like the price, what is the average pricing? So average going to give us a center figure means like on an average, what it, it is speaking about center. So on an average, majority of the sales going to happen around 6.5 or in a very simple note. Now, what is center? This is the zone. Now, this is your bike mileage, which is around 50 kilometers per liter. So now your sal your majority of the bike mileage going to be around 50 kilometers per liter. It can be less than 50 or it can be greater than 50. But majority of the mileage is coming around 50 kilometer per liter. So in order to understand that, so in order to understand the center zone where exactly the majority of the data got concentrated to understand that I will be using measures of central so tendency. So in that measures of central tendency, we have three types mean, median and the mode. So how to how you calculate the mean? So mean is denoted with a symbol called as mu, which is equal to sum of summation i equal to 1 to n. So xi by n. So if this column is called as salary, if I denote it as x, so this entire column is taken as xi. If I want to write it as a mean for the salary, so what is the first salary? 6.7 plus 7.8 plus 5.5 plus you got 8.2 plus you got 7.1 divided by 
how many values you got n number of values so five values one two three four five so by taking 6.7 7.8 5.5 8.2 plus 7.1 divided by 5 it's going to give me a value of mean so that is how you are able to calculate your mean value then how you calculate a median value so in order to calculate a median value first you want to arrange a data in an ascending order or in a descending order if i take this data i want to arrange in ascending order what is an ascending order takes salary so the ascending order is first least amount of value is 5.5 after 5.5 you got a salary around 6.7 after 6.7 you got a salary around 7.1 and after that you got around 7.8 and another one is 8.2 in this entire value what is the center value now first i arrange the data in ascending order in that i want to pick the center value so the median equal to 7.1 in case if there are even numbers what is even numbers even there is one more salary there is sixth person where his salary is 8.4 so again you are placing 8.4 in the last now you need to take the center two values 7.1 plus 7.2 by 2 so median for even number is 7.1 plus 7.8 by 2 so you are adding 7.1 plus 7.8 and you are dividing by 2 that is how you calculate a median for even count and for a median odd count is center value and for median even count is center two values so the median is used in order to pick the center two values so mean and median can be used for continuous data if you are able to take mean and median can be used for continuous data if you are having a continuous data you are able to calculate the mean value and the median value so with the help of continuous in, in case if it is a discrete data you will be using mode how you calculate a mode it is used as a most occurring if there is a value like salary and uh, the location for example now you got a salary here we got location so the location is like uh, they are paying Hyderabad, Bangalore, 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 so Mumbai, let's say Mumbai. So in this data, the majority of the people are getting placed from Bangalore. The mode of the data is Bangalore. So the most occurring, the most repeated, even if there is a data points like one, two, three, four, one repeated four times, even within that you can say that, but mode is used mostly for a discrete data. So it is called as most occurring. So Bangalore is most occurring. So based on the mode, I can say majority of the openings are happening at Bangalore when compared to Hyderabad. So after Bangalore, we can see more openings in the Mumbai location. So that is what your mode is mode helps us to explain about the most occurring values so mode is used for discrete data whereas uh, median and the mean is used for your continuous data but here comes a question so why to use your particular uh, mean why to use your mean or why to use median so when why we need to go with the three things or why we need to go only one thing so let's try to understand this practically with a small excel example see you on our next